Right, okay, we go there, right, okay. So this is going to be a talk on squeezes. Okay, uh, Krista 11, deal source, table options, log, reserve, Krista 11. Okay. Um, right. Okay. And again, I say to west, east, and north for the first time, you're not actually sitting at the table. So if you click on your name, you will be in the Kibitza box. Um, not that it will matter for quite a long time. So what we're going to talk about today is uh, squeezes. So uh, I'm hoping to actually reach the examples, but the plan is to give you a general talk on squeezes, how they operate, and work out the plan that we will be following to identify squeezes and implement them. And then after that, we will work through, well, if you stay with the course, 100 examples, by which time you were so tired of squeezes, you hope that you'll never, ever have to play one in your life. So uh, let's begin. And I have to begin by giving you some uh, terminology so we discuss things. So I have to tell you, first of all, uh, what is a threat, sometimes called a menace. And a threat is a card that can only be beaten by one of your opponents, but not both of your opponents, just one of them can beat that card. Um, so, for instance, obviously, if you have the ace queen, it uh, could be a finesse position, but it doesn't have to be. You could regard that as the ace with a threat, because believe me, only one person can beat the queen. Uh, jacks are often threats, especially when you have uh, ace and jack. Half the time, the king and queen will be in the same hand, and therefore only one person can beat it. That makes the jack a threat. If the king and queen are split, well, then it isn't a threat. Now, the more interesting threats are the ones that people don't see. And they're the ones that come from owning long suits. So, for instance, if you have ace, king, queen, small, that's a four card suit, opposite a doubleton, well, almost certainly that small card isn't going to take a trick in its own right, but actually it's a threat because however they break, um, let me bring friend Mel in. Um, so that's table options. Oh, the new BB is, BBO is wonderful. So it's pretty right. So it's moving me north. So friend Mel, oh, no. reserve first. And Mel. Okay, so who's the other one? Okay, so if I go to West, I reserve it for K underscore Wilson, right? right? Okay, there we go. Well, I've added somebody else to Avon. Uh, no problem, friend, Mel. Um, this will hopefully this will sort itself out, but I'm not sure whether this is going to be permanent for BBN. Right, we're ready to go then, or continue? Okay, so as I was saying, ace, king, queen, small, opposite the Dalton is a threat, because actually only one person, I mean, they break four, three, only one person we had to beat that card. And uh, there's more common threats, the ones that are overlooked, of course, they are ace, king, queen, small, opposite three, small, because everybody says, oh, uh, a third, one third chance of, breaking three three and i might have a trick out of that small card maybe but you uh, have a hundred percent chance that you have a threat card and it can be used in a squeeze and so it goes on okay so those are threats they are cards that can only be beaten by one of your opponents now one of the things you need for a squeeze to work are two threat cards not just one so you're going to have options between the two uh, the idea is that maybe you can set up one or maybe you can set up the other to be a winner. The next thing you need for a squeeze is that uh, most of the time, anyway, certainly for the early squeezes, you will need um, a winner accompanying at least one of those threat cards. So it's not just to have, um, say, the, the queen on its own again, the king, you need the ace with the queen so the ace can act as an entry or something like that. 
Um, and that's because you want to play with both of your hands. So if you're going to set up a squeeze, you really can do it with everything in your own hand. You have to have some way of utilizing the threat cards in the other hand, in, in the dummy, for instance. So uh, to utilize those, you need some way of crossing over. And that's why you have the second requirement that you have to have an entry. And ideally, that entry um, most of the time needs to be with one of the threat cards. And here's how it works. Um, we start off with our two threat cards, and that means there are two cards out there competing. I'm going to call those cards guards. Uh, they're the cards that the opponents have that stop me cashing my threats and turning them into winners. And because I have two threats, by definition, they have two guards. And what you hope is that those two guards are in the same opponent's hand, while yours, um, ideally, yours should be split between the two hands that you've got. So you have no problem hanging on to your threat cards, but if you play off every single outside card, outside the threat suits um, that you have, you will often put that person under pressure because he has to keep on discarding. And what you hope is that uh, they have to go and throw away one of their guards. And of course, once they do that, you're in there like lightning. You either cash one of your threats or cross to the other one and cash that one. So that's the basis of it. And that means the number three thing you need is to be lucky. Because if somebody has one of the guards, um, for instance, suppose that person has uh, four to the jack of clubs and is guarding against your ace, king, queen, two in the, in the club suit. His partner has only two clubs. He's out of the picture. But because the first person has many cards, or at very least one card, to be the person guarding that suit, the theory of vacant spaces says that any other card you pick on is more likely to be in the other hand, not in the same hand as the one which has got jack small, 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 because there's only nine unknown cards in that hand, but the guy who's got two small cards, there's 11 over there. So the odds are actually biased slightly against you. And they're not awful. I mean, it's, so it's, it's nine to 11, but it's, it's not as good as a finesse. So uh, the sad thing is that if you're learning all this stuff about squeezes, and if it comes to a choice between taking a finesse or running a squeeze, well, the squeeze is actually the one that has the better chance of succeeding. Although, of course, the, sorry, the finesse is the one that has the better chance of succeeding. The finesse, of course, gives you loads of applause from your partner and any convictions who are watching, but it's not technically quite as good as uh, giving a squeeze. Lady Doc, I can't see her anything yet. Is that because Lady Doc is on the wrong system or because she's not at the table? No, she's writing to the table. I've done both those things on here, some voice, bread and press. It's right. Um, I have an assistant. It is the beautiful uh, Catherine. And She's actually going to field any questions for me and point out things that I've missed. So she is Kathy 59. So if you want to actually communicate with me, she's actually on a Skype call with me. So can you re Oh my God, really? That's for Adam. Um, right. This is slow, isn't it? Table options. Admit somebody. Uh, Jingler UK. Okay, the only way to get them in is to type their name at the table and for them to back out into the, isn't it ridiculous? Um, thank you, that must be you, uh, Curls, to uh, Sanya. Uh, that will answer that one. That's high rise. See you on you Nothing has come to you, Cathy. I can continue. Uh, okay, lovely. All right. Okay, so we know what we want. We want a, uh, an opponent who's got both threat cards. That technically, the technical term is called being busy. Um, a busy opponent is one who's got more than one threat card and has to look after them all. 
So how do you know if you've got a busy opponent? And uh, there are three situations. Uh, one of them is you don't. You just have nothing better to play for. So you might have as well play for the squeeze as just go down. Why not? Um, who knows? You might be lucky. Another one is the bidding might have told you. Trump showing 15 to 17. There's good chances they got loads of high cards. And if you have uh, guards missing, which are uh, high card guards, then probably the same person is looking after them. And the last one is that you can discover it from the play. So I mentioned earlier that if you have the ace and the jack, uh, you've got a 50% chance that the jack is a threat. But if somebody starts by leading the king, well, almost certainly when people lead the king against contracts, they've got king queen. So now your jack is, well, I suppose you're gonna beat the king with the ace anyway, but you get the idea. The lead has told you about some of the cards they own. So you can discover things in the play that then incline you towards playing for a squeeze. Um, they're not just a sort of random hit and miss. They're normally targeted. It's relatively rare to just do a squeeze out of the blue that you normally have a better option. Uh, when it comes to play. Okay, now I'm going to start by looking at automatic squeezes. And an automatic squeeze is, uh, automatic simple squeeze, that is, is one that will work against either player. So we're not going to care whether it's West, who's sitting there with both of the guards, or whether it's East, who's sitting there with both of the guards. I will not care in this particular type of squeeze. And mainly for this squeeze to work, you want your threat cards to be split between your two hands. That always makes life easy. You have one in the north hand, one in the south hand, and as I mentioned, one of them with an entry. So squeezes where your, your threats are split between the two hands, uh, they will work against either player, which is kind of relaxing and, and also, of course, happens more frequently than squeezes against uh, particular players. Okay, so that's the general idea of what we're going to do. And now I have to go and tell you how we are going to do it. I mean, it's all about having the general idea, but when it comes down to a hand, we need to know uh, what to actually do. So I have a five point plan, which I'm going to tell you. And when we work through the exercises, I'm hoping that you will be following and working out the answers to these stage questions as we go. So number one, you actually have to identify your threat cards. And this sounds easy. Well, it's just a card that can only be beaten by one person. But there's so many distractions in life. I mentioned before how you have an ace queen and you will see it as a finesse, but now you also have to recognize it as a threat card. Um, you have ace king queen to five opposite adult. And they may break and give you two extra tricks. You may be able to concede one of them to set a card up. But regardless, if you only want one extra trick, you can see that as a skin queen with a threat card. It's a matter of getting into the habit of saying, oh, I've got a threat card there. You never know, that might be useful later on. I'll do that to Sanya, give me a moment. So that's uh, table options. Who shall I pick on? North, I think. And I shall reserve DRS21. Okay. Um, my idea is to run these, probably the first one for an hour, because there's all this chat to do. And then after that, uh, about three quarters of an hour, every, after this, everything's going to be examples. But today, I'm probably finishing around about four o'clock. My four o'clock. Many of you will have different o'clocks to me. Okay, number one, recognize them. Not as easy as they think. Step two, Look at where they are, because um, where they lie and what they're associated with um, 
uh, depends on the sort of squeeze that you can actually perform. So in our case, we'll be looking for threats and then say, oh, there's a threat with an entry and a threat in the opposite hand. Uh, that's one which allows an automatic squeeze. That's step two. Number three, you've made up your mind to play for the squeeze. Now, squeezes work by playing off every other irrelevant card, extraneous card that you have. And you have to do that to end in the right hand as well. Uh, oh, no, that isn't number three. That's number four. <gasps> Ahead of myself. Let's go to number three. Squeezes only work, um, simple squeezes, if you have all the tricks except one. So if you're going for a, a grand slam, you need 12 tricks and you're hoping to make the 13th by a squeeze. If you're in three no trumps, you need to have eight tricks with nine to play. It's not that you have eight tricks and there's the right at the start. You've got to get it down to where there's only one card that you can't actually win. You have all the winners except one card that you have to win by a squeeze. Now, often this just works itself out for you. Um, very common to illustrate squeezes with slams because it makes it easy for the person designing the example uh, to set it up so you have all the tricks except one right at the start. Uh, it also tends to happen quite frequently in three no trumps. Uh, examples will be coming, but then what will I say in the examples for you? You can always leave and come back to next week. There'll be examples by then. Um, so you have to have all the tricks except one. And that means often it just happen, but sometimes you'll have to work at it. Because if you have eight tricks with ten to play, well, you need to get it down to eight tricks with nine to play. That means you will have to actively give a trick away to them to get the, the situation to where you want. And that's called um, having the right number of winners is called having the count. And getting it to that situation is called rectifying the count. There's, there's some more jargon for you to understand. OK, now on the plan, um, you want to go and cash all of your winners and all your extraneous cards. Now, winners are the cards in the side suits, which aren't part of the threat suits. You can always keep winners in the threat suits. They're, they're never a problem. But you've got to play off all of your side suit winners. And you also have to play off any blocking cards. If you have a single winner and it's opposite um, an ace, um, it's no good squeezing the opponent, setting up that wonderful queen, if you have a singleton ace in the opposite hand, then you have to play to the ace and be in the wrong hand. You can't cross, you can't cash your winner. So not only all the winners, um, you've also got to cash any blocking cards in the way um, of, a of, of cashing a threat. And if you think cashing all your winners is easy, trust me, it isn't, because often the free suit is the trump suit. And the number of times I watch somebody set up a perfectly good squeeze, but can they bring themselves to play off that last trump? No, no, no. They want the safety blanket of owning a trump in their hand. And so they do something different and the squeeze doesn't work because they haven't played off their last uh, their last winner. You've got to be prepared. And I should add as well, we're down to sort of trick 11. They're worried that you're going to get in and run their club suit or something. Nevertheless, they cannot bring themselves to cash that last three winner. So that's something else you'll have to get into the habit of looking at. I'm prepared to cash that last trump if I have to. And then finally, what do I look out for? Do I have to watch every single card that goes? Um, and fortunately, the answer is no, because that would require quite a bit of concentration. You see, the way this is going to work is we're going to have um, a threat card which doesn't have an entry with it. I'm going to call that the single threat card, all on its own. And we're going to have a threat card which has an entry with it. And amazingly, I'm going to call that the entry threat card. You are going to play up all your winners and hopefully squeeze the busy player. Now, what you want to be is in the hand with a single winner so you can cash it if they've gone and thrown away the guard for the single winner. 
but otherwise you're going to cross over on the entry and try your luck on the other threat card, the entry threat card. So all you need to know is whether your single winner, uh, single threat has become a winner. That's the only suit you need to keep track of. If you're hanging on to the queen of diamonds and the king is out against it, that's all you need to worry about because come a hell of high water, whatever's going to happen, if, if, it, if they haven't thrown the king of diamonds, you are going to play the other, because it's nice to follow everything. It's nice to know you're going to succeed or it's miserable to know you're going to fail, but uh, you don't have to follow everything. All you need to do is keep track of is your single winner about to be beaten? And then if the answer is uh, yes, they've kept it, you're just going to try the other one and see how it goes. So that's the five point plan. Um, but there's another step. And um, this is actually step zero. And the reason I haven't included it in the plan for squeezes is because it's got nothing to do with squeezes, is what you're supposed to do every time a dummy hits the table. Because you're supposed to go through uh, your own check routine uh, to see uh, the way that you should approach the contract. It's very rare at this stage that you're immediately planning to squeeze. Normally, you're uh, working out, should I finesse? Should I set up that suit? Should I plan an end play? Should I do something? Here's the routine that you follow when you go in. I'm sure you've been to a course that's given you all these, but you count your tricks, and certainly in Trump contracts, you count your losers. You work out how many tricks you need. You look at each suit in turn and you say, how can I play that suit? What are the tricks involved? Refresh your memory. Uh, for instance, with ace, queen, small, opposite three, small. If you're a beginner, you only see the finesse. If you're a stronger player, you will see that you can play to the ace and maybe drop the offside king and still lead to the queen later. And if you're a sneaky player like me, you'll try leading the small one from Dommy first because people with kings will often rush up and play them because they're so nervous. And now I don't have to go taking it. There's all sorts of ways of playing ace, queen, small, opposite three, small, not just the one. And refresh your memory about how you might actually play it. Make a plan. Play it through in your mind. I'm going to do this. They will do that. I'm going to do this. They will do that and so on. And if it's successful, well, uh, that's good. Just check. Maybe there's a better plan. You know, the chess principle, see a good move, look for a better one. And if it fails, oh my goodness, they're going to catch five club tricks here. Make a new plan and go back to the beginning. I'm going to do this. They're going to work on getting a plan. And only then do you play the first card and the first trick. So you've got to do all that. And this time you've got to start evaluating suits for threats because you now add on the, I'm also just checking for threats as I do my, my things. Well, piece of cake, really. You're going to have no problem with all of these. Um, so I don't know, do I give the five steps here? I, I know uh, Sanya is going to send you the notes and the course. So, Perhaps I'll just remind you of the five steps as we go along, or the six steps if you can do step zero. Um, let me bring in now, we do actually need um, east and north to lead. I should add, this was set up for three particular people. So they're the people who are going to be sitting in the south seat. Bob, you have to leave. Uh, B, I gave them to Sanya. She's doing whatever she thinks is right with them. I'm, I'm not really responsible enough to be allowed to put things on websites and things like that. Uh, Adam, you need to sit in the south seat. You may as well start. You start it always. Hey, okay, so if we redeal, we should hopefully bring up one of the hands. Better sit, 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 sit. Okay, jolly good. And somewhere over here, because I've moved a count for number one.
Right, okay. Um, um, right, now, um, yes, good choice, Alan, but that will take forever. Their bidding doesn't really matter. If you want to start with a bit of seven hearts, that will get us to the final doctor. Well done. So, um, I want to be, oh dear, it should be killing one hand. Uh, I forgot to alter it. So, sorte with eating options should be just the south hand at the moment. Thank you. Well done. I remembered. Okay, so pass, pass, and pass. And the lead is the king of spades. Okay, Adam, now you're going to have to type to the table so everybody hears this, and me too, since you're not on the Skype call with Kathy. Um, this is the point, of course, where you do your normal due diligence of working out all the possible lines for making the contract. Can you tell me um, what's the first step of due diligence? Nothing to do with squeezes yet. Uh, yep. Okay, so you need two more. Well done. Count winners and it's 11. You need two more to the next step. There you go to each suit in turn. Hearts are solid. Spades are, well, interesting. How do you rate anything? In, uh, and a diamond rough. Okay, that, that'll bring you up to 12, but that doesn't bring you up. Okay. Um, anything for the space suit? Oh, well done. On to one of the later steps, um, because once we're up to 11, we will have the right number for a squeeze. But uh, meanwhile, going back to due diligence, we look at every suit in turn. Uh, you can get an extra ship from diamonds by roughing. Jack is a threat card because uh, they've led the king. It's a threat card against the West. Anything else? And the seven of clubs, because you have ace, king, queen of clubs and a four card suit. They might break through three. And in the olden days, that's all we would have said. Just, well, where else can I go for my last trick? Um, uh, clubs have to break through three. But now you might be able to do a squeeze. And the next thing is, what sort of a squeeze? Which is the uh, threat card with an entry? Um, is it the Jack of Spades or is it the Seven of Clubs, which is with an entry? This is an easy one. Remember, threats are normally uh, no. You cannot cross over to Dommy in the spade suit and catch the Jack of Spades. Okay? So the only one you can cross over to and then catch the threat is the Seven of Clubs. So the seven of clubs is the entry, and the jack of spades is therefore your single threat that you wish to be in a position to cash if they are um, if they, they go and unguard it and throw away the queen of spades. So that's your ideology: single threat, jack of the dummy, yeah. entry with a threat, the clubs in the south hand. So. Um, Playing for the squeeze involves exactly the same eventually playing for the, you, know, you don't lose playing off ace, king, queen and hoping the clubs are three, three. So we're going to play it as a squeeze. So the next thing is plan. How are you going to order your play in order to end up in dummy, cashing the finals? You want to cash in dummy so you can cash the jack of spades if it becomes a winner. So... How are you going to do that, Adam? You want to rough a diamond as well? You're going to make a plan, which is quite complicated to type. So if you want, you can actually make the plan in your head and actually start playing the cards. Well, he's sure to hear me on voice. And don't forget, he can, if, 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 if if Adam replies on Skype, he will not be able to. Yeah, but it doesn't help because everybody else has to know what's going on. Oh, but, oh, oh voice. I've tried, I've tried to get people to voice and they just crash the voice. So it seems one of the worst voice I've ever used. 
You're in seven. You should win this one, Adam. Trust me. You want to do uh, for Isabel because you want to be in the hand with a single threat, uh, ready to cash it, but able to cross to the hand with the entry. You want to end up in the north hand, Isabel. Okay, you want to well, as you cash your final squeeze card, you want to end up in that north hand opposite. Okay, what do you do next? Um, everybody's waiting on you. Come on. So well, if you get it wrong, I'll just take it back. Um, you're quite right to draw chances. City letting people rough things. There's another, another trump pattern. pattern. Does, Does that, that help? help? Yep. Okay. Who should I throw away? I don't know. A spade. A spade. Good idea. And this, and this will correct the count for you as well, because um, that will bring your winners up to 12, which you remember is essential. Okay, that's all the brooms done. Um, yeah, it could do, doesn't cost. And, and I'll just mention, you didn't have to do that. It, extra winners in the entry suit just mean that they have to keep extra winners. You don't have to play those off, nor does it cost to do so. So you're fine doing it, but you didn't have to do it. However, the next card is important. And you're quite right, that is important. Uh -huh. Quite right. Well, well done. done. You keep your entry and the threat. And time to um, show all the hands to everybody. You can see that Wes did indeed start. Uh, you can't see this, Adam, but I hope everybody else can now. Wes did indeed start with the spade guard and the club guard. Well, you can see the jack of spades in Derby. There's no way he's going to throw away the queen of spades. So, Adam, did you see the queen of spades? Is the jack of spades good? Answers no, you didn't see it. So, okay, what do you do? Well, you're, you're not, not going to catch the jack of spades, that's for sure, because it's not a winner. And you hope this is going to work. You are going to catch the jack of spades, even though it's not a winner. No, I don't think you should do that. A misclick, yeah, 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 I've heard it all before. And, and remember what I said earlier, earlier, you only need to keep track of the Queen of Spades because if the Queen of Spades is the winner, this is what you are going to play, hoping that now the other suit becomes good. And yeah, it worked. You know, succeeded as well, it comes to 3-3. Three, three. But playing the squeeze gave you the extra chance that when when, when the, the clubs, clubs win 3 3, the person with the. Okay, does the. He successfully did enough distribution. Uh, it definitely depends on one of the opponents has to have both of the guards. If you'd have put those four clubs in the east hand, Jonathan, 
then West would have held on to the Queen of Spades, East would have held on to Jack 10, 9, 8 of clubs, and you would not have been able to make this contract. Okay, so it does depend on where they go. Okay, then. Now, Adam, the idea was, how are we doing? Yeah, we get another couple of hands in and take a, take a break for today. Uh, I'm going to rotate among you and your friends. If you wanted to leave the table, if you want to hog it, you stay there. If you want to leave and let Jonathan or Bob in, that's up to you. Come on. Leave or say you're staying. Is it all true to there? All squeezes are some. And the only ones you can say that you know how we're going to work are whether bidding or play has told you where the cards are. And there's actually quite a few of those, Jonathan. The many. Jonathan or Bob, sit in the south seat, please. There are many where you can actually know that this is going to work. Uh, others like that one, it's just an extra chance. So why not play with the extra chance? If you don't want to play, Adam will sit in the south seat again. Whoever is there first plays the next hand. Suppose nobody wants to play then. I could put B in then. Adam, Jonathan or Bob sit in the south seat. Wow, this is hard work. B, how do you like to sit in the south seat? It says waiting for permission. What permission? I've got no it's locked but i'm not getting a request for somebody to sit i am in charge aren't i well i have because there's no okay when you click on the south you can i don't get a there right go there okay i've got voice up i've got that up no i've got try clicking it again Oh, I'm off the seats. Yes, yeah, so I'm off all of them. But that's okay. Yes, yeah, good idea. Table options. Uh, unlock. The Close. Okay, okay, unlocked it. In you come. Yes, it was. I know. Well, it's the. Yay! We're off. Okay, so I need to redeal. This is hand number two. Um, this will be Ackle bidding, I'm afraid. Um, thank you. Teaching options. South. Okay. Right. Okay. We're off then. So um, at least it may or may not be an Ackle sequence. Anyway, it's a one club from partner. One club. Uh, two hearts. To you. What do you fancy, fancy, Jonathan? Okay, time for due diligence. Um, what did you do first? Well, you'll have to try and get the visitor. I'm sorry, I um, I actually am better than this. I have done a lot of it, but I'm a bit, uh, a bit late arriving today because of things here. Anyway, come on, what did you do first? First step. Uh, well. Yeah, okay. okay. Any winners? Four, five, six, seven, eight. eight. Okay. That's, That's jolly good. Um, uh, and, and then go to the suits. suits. Any, Any chance, chance of getting tricks in space? space? Uh, looking, looking for a nine. Yeah. Any, Any chance, chance of getting tricks in hearts? 
Oh, I, I think, think there's a good, good chance, chance to take four club trips, trips, don't you, really can to Hey, there's, there's a good chance, chance of checking diamonds. diamonds. Hmm, OK. okay. So, um, with everything unlikely, and you can't take all that many art finesses, what's your natural line of play to make this contract? It is indeed. So, so um, uh, off you go. go. Um, play play the hand and take the club as a contract, contract because that, that is indeed the natural line of play. play. Um, hmm, okay. Not sure about that, but yeah, You're quite right, right. because if the diamond, diamond that loses and you have docked the first trick, they, they will have three spade tricks, so they can at least three spade tricks. So, very good idea to get there. And there's no problem. There'll be each of six hearts, so you've got communications. Hmm. I don't call that taking the diamond for this, so okay. Fine. Normally wrong, wrong to go and play off first communication search, but carry on. Hmm. Did. Hmm. Well, it may still work, I suppose. Oh, yeah. Okay. Okay. I, personally, I think you've already gone down. Yeah. But, uh, okay. Right. No, I've gone. Sorry, can, can I undo that? I'm just looking at something else. Do I undo? I undo. I would actually win the king in practice and start on the space. Right, okay. okay, so, um, um, I think you went down earlier than I realised. I should have stopped you there, and I'm so sorry. Um, let's analyse at this point, because at this point, we would be rethinking how can we make the contract. Um, can you see any credit cards? I can, I can see, see two. The heart nine must be a threat card. He showed a six card heart suit, so the nine is the threat card. And there's another one that's appeared. What's the other threat card? Uh, no, the diamond queen's a winner. So, Cookie, let us get the nine of spades. Yes, there's only the ace of spades out. And therefore, the nine of spades is the threat, and the ace of spades is a guard against it. Furthermore, you know who's got the ace of spades? Who is it? Yes, 
Um, no, if West had it, he had cashed it and said you long ago, Jonathan. Uh, people are mean that way. If they have East King Queen, so they will just cash the lot and set you. East, yes, the reason that East wasn't cash is because West had three spades and East had the fourth one, and so it was unable to cash it. So we have the principle of a squeeze because East has cleared, Cleese is clearly busy. He's looking after both the heart threat and the spade threat. Why is this squeeze not going to work? You have a threat with the nine of spades, you have a threat with the nine of hearts. What goes wrong in making this a working squeeze? Because it's not going to work. Yeah, no entry. What you're supposed to have is an entry in the south hand with the nine and uh, no communication. I wonder how far I can go back because where you went wrong was it general principles right at the start. So this is going to take forever to go back. And of course, BBO doesn't let you sort of put the hand in again. Oh, goodness, there's a lot of cards in the deck. Where am I up to? This is a long way back, isn't it? Right, am I right at the beginning? I think I am. Okay. Um, uh, here's where you went wrong. You, at this point, you want to keep the heart suit as flexible as possible. That means keeping the king with a nine. You also want to be in dummy because you want to go and take the diamond finesse. And the clubs are really irrelevant. They're just uh, a free suit, nothing to do with the latest squeeze that will do. So really what you want to do is take the ace of hearts here to keep the king with the nine. Do you want to try it? And you're in the hand to take the diamond finesse and find out what's going on. So you should take the diamond finesse immediately. But it loses. Now, West says you gather this out of the hearts because he has six of them. So that's what makes him switch to the space suit. And you despond a little bit. This might think you're going down. And it's at this point that you learn you're not going down because it has to be East who's got the ace of spades, as we discussed earlier, and East who's got the diamond threat. So now we're in the same position we discussed earlier. Nine of spades is a threat, and nine of hearts is a threat, but this time you manage to keep an entry with one of the threats. So which hand do you want to end up in after you've played all your winners? What can, what can I do? I can, I can claim. Oh, yeah, I, I, I don't know how to do that. So that's spabs SG. Thank you. OK, okay. I've, uh, I didn't know you could do that. Read it from archives. Yes, yes please, please, if you hang around afterwards. OK, okay. So, so which hand do you want to end up in when the squeeze operates? Because we have, because uh, we haven't done most of our checks here. We should also check that we have all the tricks except one. And uh, you see that we do. Okay. And you want to end up in a hand with a single threat. So you can either cash it or play across to the hand with the entry threat. So uh, you are wrong, Jonathan. You don't want to go to the south end. Oh, you change your mind to north. And Caroline, you're right as well. You want to end up in dummy, ready to cash the single threat. And when, when we, we do this, which card are we looking out for? The card that beats the single threat. 
And the, the single threat is the nine of spades, so we only look out for, yep, the ace of spades. So you're going to play off all our sides of winners, ending in dummy, ready to play the nine of spades if it has become a winner. Um, okay, here we go then. Ah, you noticed. I thought if I did the unusual thing, you might. Um, um, did you really mean to play the? Yes, yes you did. Yes, because no, you... no. What do I do now? You pressed the knife. That's right. It's me. Okay. Right. Okay. okay. So really, I should have stopped you earlier because you're breaking general principles of ruling with the king. You make the club hearts of the orchid to play. Uh, the the suit, because, because you know he's had six. Oh, I should have shared. Oh, everybody's a single player now. Because you know he's had six, you know that you already cut them off from one another. So there's no, uh, they may run the suit against you. And you want to be dummy, ready to take the dive in this. And stop playing on irrelevant side suits. It normally doesn't do anything except remove options later in the play. I don't think it did anything here, uh, playing off a few clubs, but other times I've seen people. Remove entry to dummy, which turns out to be crucial there. Focus on the plan. The plan was to take the diamond and this. Why go and catch a few clubs first? Get on with the plan. Okay, Bob, one last one, and then we should pack in for the day. Does the entry? Yes, it does, Isabel. And that's because you have to play off all the side suit winners for the squeeze to work in order to bring the, the cards down to where they have to throw one away. Now, if the entry is in one of the other threats, unless you've got to go and cash it as part of your squeezing technique, and then when you want it, it isn't there anymore because you've got to cash it. So it's got to be in the entry threat, and the fact that you have an entry with a threat means that person has to keep two cards, the guard, and the support card because you have the entry in the threat. So yes, the entry has to be in the same suit as the threat. With two threats, you focus on the singleton threat. Does who focus on it to the B? Um, you've, you've worked through the plan. You work out where the threats are. You work out which one is the entry. You decide if they're split, you have an automatic squeeze that work against anybody, and you play to end up with a single threat, you cash it or cross to the entry threat. I was confused with the entry to the spades. Okay, uh, there was no entry to the nine of spades there, so therefore it couldn't be the entry threat. Therefore it was the single threat and you had to be in that hand ready to cash it. The hearts was the entry threat. The king and the nine of hearts were together. We were perfectly happy in the other hand. We could be in the dummy and still cross to the south hand and cash the king and the nine. All right, B? No, it isn't hard. Piece of cake. All right, last one for today. And then after that, of course, millions more as you get used to identifying threats and so on and so on. Um, Bob, this is a nice one. It's another seven hearts, so there's going to be little preamble to get to the point. You may bid seven hearts and get going. Yeah, but you may still bid seven hearts and get going. Hmm. All right, okay. Oh, okay. Right, I don't advise that as a norm, but it's um, spade eight. Okay. So, what do you do first? Pray. Hey, 
That's a tech end, isn't it? Yeah, yeah count with it. So you've got five hearts, three diamonds, that's eight. Ace, king of clubs, that's ten. Ace of spades, eleven. Uh, yeah, that's not good. Am I going wrong? Uh, two, three, three, uh, two, three, right, okay. Sorry, Sorry to talk to myself, myself there. there. Okay, so, uh, it wasn't an urban, but I've just noticed that rougher club. That would be part of my plan for making this little bit. That bring it up to 12. Um... Where else can you find the trick? Well, well okay. okay. Well, well, the Queen of Spades, Spades might be a Sorry about that. My wife's sensitive to sound, and I forgot to shut the door. Okay. Uh, your first thing is, are you okay? Now, by not playing the queen, Bob, you decided to keep the queen of spades as a threat card, um, rather than play for it as an immediate winner. And surely that's right. It's hard to think of a holding where somebody would lean away from the queen and yet have led uh, the eight. The eight is almost certainly second highest from some suit. Um, so I imagine he's going to put the 10 in just to make sure. Okay, so, um, didn't go through threats, so yes, okay, you've turned the Queen of Spades into a threat. Can you see another threat, by the way? Yeah, the Seven of Diamonds, okay. So your plan has to be to, um, uh, so play through the normal thing to set up your extra winner by roughing the club. And then if you play the squeeze, which hand do you want to end up in? End up at the table. Okay. So, piece of cake, off you go. Good idea. There you have plenty of trumps. You don't want to leave them with trumps. Oh, well, yeah, it doesn't matter if you have extra winning cards in the in in the, the threat suit. So although you could play off the ace and king of diamonds to just keep the queen, it's just as good to keep the extra cards because they have to keep extra cards as well. So uh, what will he throw? Um, well, clubs are useless. Um, clubs are still useless. Hmm, now this is a bit embarrassing. So, um, uh, teaching options. So that's uh, show everybody the full hands. So, everybody's in on the secret now. You can see that East did indeed have to look after the long diamonds and look after the space. There's no way he's going to throw the king of space, not with somebody sharp like Bob in the South Sea. Gonna throw a diamond. And you check, is the Queen of Spades a winner? No, it isn't. So you're gonna play the other one. Okay. Just don't block the suit. Oh, what a relief. And in it comes. Uh, who said that? Um, Jane Lord, no. Jonathan, no. If you put up the Queen of Spades, you 
a high spade after the queen's beaten and then the ace. He's your six of spades and the four of spades in dummy. Both of those can be beaten by both players. You no longer have a threat in spades. West will keep the spades it guarded by hanging on to the nine. East will throw away all the spades and keep the diamond suit guarded by hanging on to the king 10. So if you put up that queen of spades at trick one, you no longer have a threat in spades. Okay. So the only difference on this hand to hand one was the fact that you had to make a decision about am I going to keep the queen as a threat or am I going to uh, see whether they made a mistake and ride with the queen at trick one. I don't know people brave enough to lead up to a seven heart contract by leading away from a king. I really don't. So I think it's a fairly straightforward guess. Okay. More of these uh, curls. Are you publishing the five point plan and maybe the six point plan if you include the, the zero step? Yeah, I wish people can have a read of those in their quiet of their home. Um, yes, you're right. Okay, so those of you who want to go over the steps can do so because uh, Sanya will be publishing it. Um, after this, it's all examples and uh, it starts with automatic, it goes on to positional squeezes where um, the squeeze, it, it's relevant which position you are at the table, whether you get squeezed or not. And then finally, I do double squeezes. I don't do the more complicated squeezes. They're relatively rare. So three suit squeezes. I don't do end play squeezes, although they're not, they are fairly common. Um, I don't do crisscross squeezes. There's various squeezes I don't do, but they're all relatively rare. I'm just going to cover the three standard types of squeezes which have some sort of frequency of occurrence. So I will be back next week with more examples, no more chat, just into the examples, and see where we get to. Okay, now I'm going to talk to... Um, um, oh God, I should make a name. Uh, uh, who, who do I tell me how I can do a hand again? I've already been me. Okay, Babs. Is it, uh, um, do do I do I stay at the table? Yes. It, everybody else can go because I'm just going to talk to my friend Babs, who's going to tell me how I can reload a hand. Okay. So thank you all for coming. I look forward to seeing you next week. Bye-bye, Caroline. And Barbara, off you go. Tell me, oh, I've heard of the blue. I don't know. Blue is the acronym that love, sorry, love was the first person who wrote a good book on squeezes. And his acronym was blue. Uh, e was entry. B was something. I can't remember. I'm afraid I didn't find it useful. I had to play, his hands were wonderful. And I played through all of the hands. It was by playing through his hands that I learned how to go and do squeezes. And one of the nice thing about Love's book is he does all the squeezes. He even does compound squeezes and they're really quite difficult. Um, so, oh, add you to voice. Yes, okay, I'll try that, Barbara. Um, um, right, yes, and, uh, okay, I'll keep, yeah, right, okay, so, um, uh, dear, 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 bad, so shut that down, <sighs> shut that down, request to speak, and add yourself, delete, cedar, stop speaking, mute, oh, well, that request to speak, that doesn't help, oh, I put in a username, so Babs, I don't think it's case sensitive actually. But and there. Uh, okay, Babs. Uh, the, I've had bad experiences with this. The first uh, well. Okay. You should be able to speak today. Yes, but that's because I've got we've got a teaching table and I think hopefully I'm going to be told how to go and um and I'll speak here to the public to have another oh right, okay, thank you, Adam. I will do that. And uh that's that's Useful. So, though you need to add manual PC, yes, sorry, but it's a story.